Welcome to another episode of Ted's Tiny Trucks. I've got a new project on the bench today. Uh, it's an axial race spawn. Originally I bought it because I wanted something a little bit different to my other rigs. So things like the Cherokee and the Bronco are more, well, heading a bit more towards being scale based rigs. Um, and the cross trucks I've got are trail based rigs. And I seem to be compromising my rock crawling ability by fitting smaller wheels and tyres sort of generally heading down that route so I thought this would be a, a nice opposite approach being as it's a, it's a 2.2 rig so wheels and tyres are much bigger axles are wider it's a completely different approach with a, with a tube frame chassis it's a bit more of a basher than, a, than the other trucks it, you know it's got certain advantages there's zero overhang on the rear, zero overhang on the front, so approach angles and departure angles are pretty good when crawling, and it's something different to be honest. So I mean as is, as is the way with all, all of my projects, I tend to have an idea, digest it a bit, research a bit, and then figure out what I'm going to modify, uh, and this one's no different. Now the main reason for starting it now is I've been thinking I'll get this ready for the UK scale of nationals which is the middle of October this year uh, and then it dawned on me yesterday that I've basically I've got two weeks to, to turn this rig around. That's absolutely virgin at the moment, I mean it's never had a battery through it, I don't even know if any of the electronics work, I assume they do because it's, it's, just, it's an axial ready to run kit. Um, but the only reason it's out of the box is I'd run out of space to store the box, so the box got recycled pretty quickly and the rig, well I just made one of my usual cradles or skids or whatever you want to call it from pieces of softwood available at you know, your local DIY store. It's a great way of storing things, easy to pick up and keep the tyres off the, off the floor so it stops me getting flat spots but also keeps the suspension fully loaded so it keeps it more in its, its normal uh, orientation. Um, in terms of modification, oh, there's a couple of bits I'm not that keen on. Um, if we look at the plastic links underneath, we can see they've got quite a lot of flexibility in them, which is, oh, I, I suppose it's okay if you're bashing the thing down and it gives everything a bit of give and a bit of movement, but that's not really what you're all crawling. Uh, and then the other thing that I'm never really that impressed with is the fact that the front servo horn hits the chassis is a bit of a pain and stops the travel there whereas actually when you get a bit of clearance you can effectively get what thick end of another three quarters of an inch worth of travel out the front end so i think one of my first jobs will be to well i'm replacing the servo and i shall shim shim it back a fraction and just buy myself the extra couple of millimeters clearance at the front ready to go um, now the long-term plan, which I'd hope was going to be short-term, but might end up being a bit longer, is to convert this to a four-wheel steering rig. So to that end, I've got myself a Flysky GT3C transmitter uh, with a new receiver, on the grounds that these can be hacked using a, a, a PC, downloading new software, uh, and increasing the options and allocation of all the buttons. Hopefully that will work, although I've never done anything like that, so that's going to be a bit of a learning experience. And uh, to be truthful, isn't required straight off the bat for going out crawling. What I did do though was buy a set of just do it the right way around. Yeah, did buy a set of stainless steel links to replace upper and lower links on the front end and the steering on the, the front end, with the theory being that those plastic ones will transfer across to the rear uh, at a later stage. If I can get the four wheel steering to work, because I've had that correctly. Um, in terms of other bits and pieces stored up for the project, uh, I've got a Castle 2.0 uh, BEC, which is a battery eliminator circuit. So, it's, the theory is it takes the load off the uh, ESC when powering the servo for steering. Uh, and in this case, I've got two of the. 20 kilogram waterproof power HD servos. So obviously one front, one rear. I mean, you can run these through a Y lead so that the, and set them up so that front and rear move in opposite directions and thus turn the, tighten the turning circle of the rig. But actually I think it's a bit more interesting if you can independently have just the front steering, just the rear steering, the two of them working opposite each other and thus tightening the, circuit, the steering diameter 
or actually working together and allow you to cramp so the vehicle can move 45 degrees effectively. That would be an interesting thing to try and get working. Of course in order to do that I needed to buy a new set of C-hubs and a new set of knuckles to convert the rear axle into steering. I've got a new receiver which gives me extra channels to hopefully work with that. Um, reading around the subject, yeah, I mean, rates have been around for well, they've been around for blooming years, to be honest. There's some fantastic information available on rcrawling.com. If you read that, you tend to find, you know, the general consensus is like first off the bat, get yourself a set of uh, universal joints for the front axle to replace the dog bones and cups. You know, they have a habit. You can actually steer so much that you can pop a dog bone out of a cup. And if you've got power on at that point, you just end up damaging things and ripping things apart, which is which is not much fun. Uh, and because I'm going four wheel steering, I've ended up with uh, two packets of those. The motors also have a tendency to overheat, so the suggestion is that you lower the gearing by increasing the number of teeth on the spur gear, reducing the number of teeth on the pinion, and therefore giving the motor a bit of an easier life at the expense of slowing the thing down, which isn't really the end of the world for a rock crawler. Um, and then to compound that problem, call it as such is I've bought a underdrive gear set for the rear axle so I can make the rear of the rear of the vehicle turn slower than the front the main aim of things like that being when you're going uphill rather than the so basically what you're trying to do is maintain contact patch as you're climbing up something if the rear axle is rotating at the same speed as the front as it's trying to climb it's pushing the front axle away from the very thing that you're trying to uh, used to create friction to pull it up. So just by slowing the rear down, it helps you to crawl over uh, obstacles. It also works on a descent by helping effectively, it's like putting a miniature handbrake on. It drags the rear of the car slightly, which keeps it down. It has a tendency to reduce it flipping forward so much. Whether it all works in practice or not, I don't know. So I look forward to giving that a go. Got new springs for, for the four shocks. I, I like to run things with a droop setup, so I've got slightly softer shocks to start, uh, springs sorry to start with, and we'll see see if I can actually seat the thing just a fraction lower to start with, uh, and then we'll tune as we go along. And I've got a new brace for the uh, rear servo mount on the rear axle. Um, I also include so I've got well, fact, actually these are off my Marlin. So there are a set of hex drivers to go on the axles because at the moment they're pin drive into the back of the plastic hub on the wheels and I've got myself a nice set of method style titanium coloured metallic grey coloured really 2.2 wheels uh, another I'd say Chinese eBay special they're just you know in terms of value for money you can't really go wrong for those and the couple of sets that I've had so far are really good at feeding up you know they fit the wheels and everything so generally very few problems I've also got uh, large bearings and small bearings to go in the steering knuckles and a hobby wing 1080 esc to run the motor i mean i do like i have to say i like these the fact that they're programmable they're 40 quid uh, well, you know generally speaking i think i got my last set for about 32 quid i don't think you can go wrong for the money you really can't um, and then, yeah, the last part is my V2 link, which apparently, plugging in as a USB, download some software onto the computer, which means I can then solder these leads to part of the board inside the FlySky transmitter, uh, and I can download new software, and then a new setup for it, which gives me a bit more versatility in how it operates. Colour-wise, well, I mean, it all comes down to time, doesn't it, really? I mean, the, the big thing is upgrade the steering servo, get a spur gear, get the motor, get all of these bits bolted on. I can probably lock the rear out, so if nothing else, even if I don't get it steering quite right to start with, at least I can have everything in position. Colour-wise, I'm thinking something like a metallic red with twin probably metallic grey stripes or something like that. I'm struggling to find replacement stickers for the front end for the lights, excuse me, and the rear lights. I may mask them off, I may just strip the whole thing, treat it as a full on rock crawler, not worry about lights and sort of standard things like that, just 
have it as a, as a true basher. I've got to be honest, I'm looking forward to it. Whether I'm going to go the full Monty, I mean, the, the standard layout includes a receiver box at the front, ESC mounted on a bracket at the side, you've got transmission and motor halfway up, and then the battery sits in a, in a battery tray at the back here. If I'm going to optimise it for crawling, which was the main idea, really what I want to do is put the battery across the front in this space here, and to move this up to the back so that the electrics are so that, you know the electrics are fairly light and are stationed away from everything else. Uh, and the battery up front is good to so try and keep a forward weight bias on the rig. I mean, it's a little, you know it's slightly tipping forwards at the moment, but not a great deal. Uh, I think anything with a slight bias, I think it's a good idea, particularly if you're underdriving the rear and leaving the front as standard. But you know the downside to squeezing battery in in this sort of space is it's a pain in the backside to get to with the body on. At least the rear battery change you can more or less do through the windows. Front battery change is a full body off job. I suppose it is possible that you could cut bodywork across here, maybe make this front panel hinge up, but then you destroy the body itself, which actually is quite nice. I mean, I like it. You know, from the rear, you can see that it's been pinched and tapered in, and it looks, to my mind anyway, so much better than the, the, the other offerings, which are a flat panel on the top, you know, moulded bumper and then flat panels on the side and the back again. It's all a matter of personal preference really. So the big job really is to get it upright, get it running, get a battery through it, make sure the gear the diffs are greased properly, get it together, shake it down, then worry about paint, and then potentially worry about getting the transmitter reprogrammed and get everything sorted. Which all sounds eminently doable in two weeks, but I'm busy all of this weekend coming, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to squeeze it all in yet. And then that's always part of the fun, isn't it? So, well, I, think we'll, I think we'll leave it there, um, and I'll, well, hopefully in the next one we've got some progress to show you and some piles of empty, par uh, empty parts packets. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.